Peer review. Most of us have heard of it before. It is the backbone of modern science. So what is peer review and how does it work? Hi, I'm R. Jay is away this week, so I'll be flying solo when I go over exactly what the peer reviewing system is and how it works. So let's get to it. Peer review, simply put, is the evaluation of work by one or more people in the same field of said work. The system keeps these reviews anonymous and ensures they have no conflicts of interest so everyone remains impartial. It serves as regulation for scientific fields rather than someone being able to publish whatever they want, or only having their friends review their work before it is accepted as part of the body of knowledge. Peer review is typically used as an evaluation to determine whether a paper should be published in an academic journal or not. Once it passes that first stage, it becomes open to the rest of the field, where scientists all over the world will try to replicate their results in their own labs. If the results are replicated, the amount of literature with that conclusion will increase, giving it a stronger scientific backing. As much as sometimes the term peer review only refers to that first stage, it is important to remember that it is an ongoing process. So how does it work exactly? Let's follow a hypothetical. A PhD candidate in Australia finishes his research project. The data is collected and the paper is written. Now he has to get it peer reviewed. The candidate sends that paper to an academic journal which best suits the study, and then the editor reads over that paper. The editor can then decide whether or not to accept the paper for peer review and possible publication. The editor will then look for experts in the field of that paper to review it. One way they do this is they check the references of the paper in question and find authors who are referenced a lot and approach them. They then check that the authors have no relationship with the author of the paper in question. Once all that is done, they send the paper out to these experts. The experts then read over the paper, examine the data, and write down as many criticisms of the paper as they can, or they can outright reject it if they find any serious problems with the study. Once the comments have been made, it is sent back to the original author who has to either incorporate or defend against the comments provided. This can go back and forth a few times until the paper is eventually accepted or rejected. Once the paper is accepted, it gets published into the academic journal. Yay! If the researcher is willing to pay, then they can make the paper open to the public, but most researchers don't do this as it's expensive. But now that the paper is available to the whole scientific community, they can begin to read it. If a scientist has a problem with the paper, there are a few avenues available to criticise it, such as writing letters to the editor or conducting a study of their own to attempt to replicate the results which they will publish. This happens all the time in science and is a key part of the process. This is the strongest part of science. Now, is it perfect? No. There have been times when the first part of the peer reviewing system has been abused by editors choosing reviewers who will pass the paper without any real review and other similar problems, but the second stage does control for this. Even if someone abuses the first stage, their paper still has to enter the second stage and be made public. If the study is illegitimate, then their results won't be replicable. Look at Andrew Wakefield. He fabricated results claiming that vaccines caused autism. It managed to get past the first stage, but then was globally smashed in the second stage where people tried to replicate his results, and no one else could. It became abundantly clear his research was fabricated, and he was ultimately exposed. If an idea can't stand up to criticism, then it isn't correct. Some people try to hide their ideas from criticism. Look at Kent Hovind. He calls himself a doctor, yet his PhD wasn't completed at an adequately accredited institution, and he didn't release his thesis for peer review. Years later, that thesis was leaked online, and it became very obvious why he had tried to shield it from criticism, as it was riddled with unsubstantiated claims and grammar mistakes that any peer reviewer would have rejected outright. The peer reviewing system is the best model we currently have for consistently obtaining the truth in regards to the world around us. It could be improved, and will be improved as the years go on, to further improve our ability to learn about the world around us. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for weekly videos, like this video, and share it around to help us raise the bar of public discourse.